Uh, Mark, and today I have to talk about Brexit again, as so often, because the British are now paying an even higher price for Brexit. Though EU environmental regulations no longer apply on the island, <laughs> and that's why now sewage is polluting the rivers and beaches. I talked about this before, but I have to talk about this again. And those who want to travel to the EU are stuck in chaos. So they now got, get their receipts for Brexit. At Easter, the first major school holiday of the year, it was clearly visible in Britain. Many buses with school children sometimes waited 16 to 19 hours in Dover to enter the EU on a school trip. Brexit has wiped out UK school holiday trips abroad there. The busloads of children who wanted to travel to Europe by ferry had little access to food, drink and toilets. In some cases, they were forced to turn back or stay in hotels near the port of Dover. And post-Brexit, Brits will have to have their passports stamped on every entry into the Schengen area, allowing European authorities to monitor whether visitors exceed the 90-day visa-free tourist limit in any six-month period. As a result, there are long queues at passport checks at the Eurotunnel and the ports and at some European airports, where Brits are now typically barred from electronic gates and at peak times, particularly during school holidays. And it's clearly visible to everyone. Here we see the receipt for a wrong decision. The Conservative government sees things differently, of course. UK Home Secretary Suella Braverman dismissed claims that the delays were a direct result of Brexit. But after all, a spokesman for Prime Minister Rishi Sunak acknowledged that the new processes required since Brexit were a factor. But this did not keep the leader of the opposition, Sir Keir Starmer, sitting still for a long time. A twist in post-Brexit rhetoric, Starmer said Brexit has had an impact on crossing the channel. The Labour leader called on the government to pull it up after bus passengers had to wait as well as check-in and ferries at the start of the Easter holidays. So far, politicians on both sides of Parliament and Westminster have agreed on one thing, not having a clear position on Brexit. The U-turn came faster than expected. Starmer put his clear criticism of Brexit into perspective on the British radio station LBC. It doesn't mean I'm advocating a Brexit reversal. I'm not. I've always said there's no reason to re-enter now. When we exited, it was obvious that conditions at the border were going to change, regardless of how you voted. You have a right to a government that recognizes that and plans ahead. However, free movement is a thing of the past for now, and Brexit advocates are becoming increasingly silent, except some idiotic trolls here in the comments. British politics has long been labeled a shit show, which means disaster. But now the term has acquired a very practical meaning. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's government must respond to growing public outrage at private water companies dumping untreated sewage into Britain's rivers and seas. And on that, of course, I saw a lot of trolls writing complete nonsense. The unsightly consequences are often visible to the naked eye, floating on the surface and annoying both locals and tourists. And they result in the once picturesque British beaches being unusable for several days. And in addition, the rivers can now be polluted by industry because EU regulations no longer apply. The government has given polluters the green light to dump risky sewage that hasn't been properly cleaned into rivers and the sea as Brexit and COVID make normal water treatment difficult. In recent months, some companies have found it harder to get hold of chemicals for water treatment as the supply chain at ports has been disrupted, largely due to the UK's exit from the EU. England is the only country in the world with a fully privatized water and sanitation system run by large regional monopolies since the late 1980s. Until Brexit, these were still controlled from Brussels. For the past year, these water companies have been dumping untreated sewage into rivers and seas, which is actually only allowed under exceptional circumstances, such as when the sewers overflow due to heavy rainfall. The Environment Agency declared a few weeks ago that this situation was unacceptable, and one example stands like no other for this failed politics of water. 
As a result, maritime life on the coasts of uh, Saltburn Beach, which used to be picturesque in the north of England, is slowly dying out. Thousands of dead mussels washed up on the shore. Environment agency officials confirmed they were investigating the incident and that the substance was coal deposits that were dumped into the sea. The fishermen claim the deaths are linked to the dredging of the River Tees, a real shit show in front of the eyes of the tourists who now avoid such places. But there are more arguments. The UK economy is suffering from the new trade barriers and the loss of European labor, leading to labor shortages in sectors such as agriculture and care. Exports are falling and the British pound has depreciated. Food sector inflation reached alarming levels as early as February, rising 18.2%. That's the highest rate since the late 1970s. The main cause seems to be an acute shortage of certain products due to Brexit. And the British are getting poorer. In January, wages rose by 6.5% year-on-year, well below the rate of inflation. In addition, the increasingly fragile political unity of the United Kingdom is further threatened. Scotland is seeking independence again and there is also unrest in Northern Ireland over Brexit and the trade and border issues it brings. The current difficulties Britain is facing are by no means solely attributable to the pandemic or Russia's war in Ukraine. Because look at Germany and other places. A negligent government has ignored the numerous warnings and offered the citizens a supposedly glorious dream of independence and, of course, sovereignty. Well, today, however, the reality is far less glamorous. Britain is paying an ever-increasing price for Brexit. And that is the real shit show. And the ones when the Brexiteer trolls are coming up again with all their um, whataboutism, which is always funny, because if you want to play whataboutism, then... It's what about his, what about that the continental Europe inflation is much below the British inflation? What about that the other G20 countries are doing much better after the pandemic than the UK? And we can play this game for a very long time. But we have to look at the UK itself and the current government and unfortunately as well as the, the opposition. So... In all the polls, Labour is still ahead of the Tories, even if Sunak made some grounds until something happened. Again, I'll talk about in another video tomorrow. But um, even if Keir Starmer gets to be Prime Minister in 2024 or 2025, what will change about Brexit? Not so much, because Labour made a complete U-turn under Starmer and they now just want to make the best of out of Brexit. There is no best out of Brexit. You can do as good as you can within a very bad situation. Yes, but how much will that help the people? Not so much. But there are no real alternatives. Of course, the UK, and yeah, I know what, what will be from some uh, very nice people in the comments about this. The UK could join the EU single market. And uh, that's the point now where I can explain... Um, why I always say they could have done this. Um, they don't have to be in the EEA or um, rejoining the EU to be in the single market. They could have done this during the negotiations on the TCA, the, the Trade and uh, Comprehensive Agreement. Of course, this, the membership in the single market could have been a part of this. There is no rule that there are no other ways than the existing ways. Of course, you can do it via a trade agreement. But it would have cost the UK a lot of their sovereignty if they wanted to do that. In this TCA, the EU could have let them rejoin the single market despite Brexit. But they wouldn't have, first of all, no say in what's happening in the EU. So they would have gone from what they felt a bad situation into a much worse, although it wasn't a bad situation in the first place because they could influence every single decision in, in the EU and uh, they did so everything that happened there happened with the consent of the British government of of the time and um, they would have kept all the EU regulations also the future regulations and so on but they with the, in a TCA during the negotiations they could have uh, negotiated to 
be part of the EU single market and the customs union like they did with Northern Ireland. So that would have been the way to do that because some people always say it would be impossible to do so without joining the EEA or um, the EU. No, it, it's not. They could have done this via the TCA. But the British never wanted that. And Starmer uh, that once wanted that doesn't want that anymore, obviously. And so it won't happen. But of course there would have been a way and there theoretically is still a way for the UK to join the single market. But it would have a lot of consequences what they have to accept in return. And that is something that won't happen. And to be honest, someone joining the single market and not joining the EU would be a complete um, it, in this fullest sense would be a complete idiot I'm sorry um, because if I want to join a club I want to join it in, in a way that I have influence on the club and not just uh, take all the rules from there and have the benefits of course but have not this, uh, no say in this in every club I am in I at least have a vote on, on the membership assemblies and uh, they wouldn't uh, if they joined it this way. Um, but at the moment, re-entering the EU is out of the question on both sides. I talked about this a lot, why I would think uh, that they shouldn't be let into the EU at, at this point of time anyway, uh, even if they want it. But um, the day will come where we will have to discuss this. But if the people in charge then in Britain are of, of a sound mind, they will discuss a re-entry into the EU and not a re-entry into the single market. Because, as I said, entering the single market without being a member of the EU is a much worse thing to do. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.